All right. Well, welcome back to Noob School. Everybody knows at Noob School, we interview great business people that started out in sales and figure out some of the things that they've learned along the way that can be helpful to you. Today, I've got one of my true all-time favorites that I've ever worked with in sales. Nate, we'll call him Nathan Barr. Welcome aboard, Nathan. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. And one of the reasons I love Nathan <clears throat> so much is because, you know, I believe in these, these psychological profile tests, these Colby tests, and Nate's was almost exactly like mine, which makes him a lunatic, right? It, we, we share that in common. We do, yes. Yeah. And so, what? I, unfortunately, I knew that that's not what I wanted in a <laughs> salesperson, right? I mean, that's not at all what the profile was we were looking for. Um, but I really liked Nate. Nate went to the Citadel. Nate was an outstanding football player. Um, personality was great, but the Colby was just not a salesperson, standard salesperson. It was much more of an entrepreneur kind of person. Would you agree? I would agree. Yeah. yeah. And so, so what happened? How did we end up making this work? Do you yeah, remember? I do. So we, um, we had a friendly uh, invitation from the career, uh, the career director. Yeah. Um, Brent. Brent. Yes. Brent said, John, this guy's just like you. Give him another chance. Let's talk to him. And then I think I fired off a couple of well-placed emails yeah. and maybe even showed a little extra hustle yeah. offering to drive up and meet you from yeah. uh, from Charleston up in Greenville. Yeah. 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 So we just, Brent knew that it would work out somehow, but I had my numbers and your numbers were not in those ranges and we decided to take a chance. And, and of course it all worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. It worked out great. But I will say, I think that you have gotten better in your career as time has gone on as you've been allowed to be more entrepreneurial and kind of run your own business, so to speak, versus like inside sales, this many calls a day. I think that's right. I think the, the more flexibility around maybe bolder ideas and bigger business yeah. problems, I think that really kind of allowed me to flourish a bit more. So yeah. I don't think your Colby was wrong. I just think we could make it work. And we did. So yeah, we did. We did. did. We absolutely did. And I guess there was room for two John Sterling's at one Apparently. company. <laughs> Um, one other uh, funny story about Nate makes him another famous Nate story was he was a great <clears throat> football player at the Citadel, which is in Charleston, South Carolina. And when these guys practiced in the summer in August, it was like, what, 110? At least. It was so hot. And they're wearing these, you know, you know, football uniforms. And wasn't there like an ice machine? Like you go to the convenience store and like open it up and get the ice. And didn't you guys used to sit in there? We did. We did. It was so hot. We couldn't get out of the humidity. And they, they had an empty ice machine at the stadium where they filled it up during game day. So yeah. to cool off, we would we would kind of sneak in there in the shade in the ice machine and, and hide out. It didn't. Now, where'd that picture come from? Because I saw a picture of that. That was the Sports Illustrated. Sports Illustrated. That was the cover of Sports Illustrated. Now, that wasn't me in the picture, but, yeah. you know, that's where we, that's where we got. Y'all would from. take turns. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Awesome. So now, uh, let's skip forward to today. I know that your career has taken you from data stream to IBM, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. you were selling big stuff for IBM and now with SAP? That's right. Right. I mean, that's just unbelievable. So walk us through, um, you know, from data stream and then IBM, SAP today, kind of how those things went. Tell us about the transition, what you've been selling, and what, what you've learned. Yeah, happy to. So, you know, DataStream was, was my crash course into business. It yep. was my first job out of college. Yep. Uh, my first sales job, for sure. Um, and I had a couple things happen to me at DataStream. One, I obviously had great mentorship. Um, I'm not just saying that. I've, I've said for years that yeah. without you and your program, I don't think any of us would have been as far along as we got as quickly as we mm -hmm. got there. So that's the first thing. The second is um, you really empowered us to be successful. So I remember the daily tapings. We yeah. would sit in the room and it was hot and it was at the end of the day and it was work, <laughs> but it, it held us accountable. But it also gave us a chance to fail and to succeed. Yeah. Um, we also learned some stuff. Uh, our CEO would come in and out of your office while we're sitting there and have a conversation <laughs> yeah. or you'd be on the phone with yeah. an assistant or a customer. Yeah. And through that um, experience, we got to see how you interacted with people and how they interacted with you. Yeah. Prior to that, 
outside of maybe your parents, you hadn't really seen Interesting. adult figures interacting with each other yeah. and, and how the how the real sausage gets made in these in these companies. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that taping thing, and we haven't talked about that much in the book or even in the in the video series, the Noob School. But uh, I do think it's still a, a great idea, for, particularly for young salespeople, is to have a you know, manager or an older experienced salesperson listen to an actual call because there's so many, yeah. you know, pauses and way you say things that can kill the deal. And the problem is you never know it. If, if you don't know what you're doing, you sure. kill the deal and the deal's over. You're like, I don't know what happened. But I think it's a lost art in yeah. some ways. Um, if you haven't been formally trained, in today's world with social media and email yeah. and text yeah. and all the different ways you can communicate, people communicating on your behalf. You know, you outsource communications to a third-party company and yeah. they run your – if you don't know that skill, yeah. then you are, you're going to be behind. That's the skill. That's how people want to engage. Right. Not an email, not a text. They want to hear from you on the telephone. Right. They want to hear your voice. Yeah. They want to understand what you're saying and the confidence in which you say it. Yeah. So I, I think it's a lost art. Um, and very applicable to what we're talking about today. It is. So <clears throat> data stream, you sold, let's say, um, more lower end solutions, like not not monster deals. You started sure. inside sales. 5K, 10K. And you worked up to yeah. what? Where'd you work up to? Uh, at data stream? Yeah. Um, 50, 60, 75K. I okay. was more of a volume. When okay. I first started, I was account based. So we yeah. were trying to upgrade specifically. Yeah, okay. And we were also selling services. Okay. So a lot of what I did was a combination. So I kind of figured out the bundle mentality. Yeah. A little bit of software, a little bit of services. And I'll, you know, I'll keep coming back. I'll call you next quarter, next month, once okay. you get it implemented, and we'll just keep rolling it out. And then and then how did you transition from there? Did you leave data stream at that point and then go to IBM? So I had a I had a stop in between. I worked for a company called Blackball down in Charleston. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nonprofit software. One of the one of the biggest takeaways from that organization was um they didn't discount. Uh. So, you know, a lot of a lot of times as a salesperson, you fall back on that discount mentality. Yeah. If it's too hard, I'll discount. If, yeah. uh, if we didn't get the right references, we'll just discount it. Yeah. We didn't have that to lean on. So it really kind of put me to focus on yeah. what's the value and what are the relationships and what are we going to do to get it done? Yeah. What a crutch. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And we, you know, we teach a little bit of negotiation to some of our clients. And one of the first things we do is that it's to say, instead of saying, Let's teach all the salespeople how to negotiate like pros. Is we just say, just take the negotiation power away from them. Just say it's it's out of their hands now. Move it up to a management la- layer, sure. and that helps you right off yeah. the bat. So that's interesting. Yeah, they're a good company. They're a good company. A lot of our, our folks ended up down yeah, there. It's a great company. Yeah. Um, and then from there you went to IBM. I did. From there I went to IBM, okay. and at IBM, um. I think that's probably where the bigger deal mentality was. I was actually able to kind of do it. So um, one of the one of the great things about an IBM or really any of these large enterprise companies is is it's a collaborative sale with other people within the business, but it's all working towards a big commercial agreement. So mm-hmm. it's no longer I need eight of these or ten of these. It's we want to have a collaborative partnership and we want to spend four million dollars. We just need to figure out what's going to fall in that $4 million. Our business priority may be, you know, whatever you're selling or whatever somebody else is selling. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of internal selling that goes into these big deals Mm -hmm. because you have to promote internally your product and you have to get your customer to say, as part of this $4 million buy, for example, I want $3 million of it to be what what Nathan and his team Mm -hmm. represents. Yeah, I got you. Trying to split up internally who's getting credit for what. A little bit, but it's also the idea of you're taking it to a senior business person. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring you this large deal. It's the expectation up front. There's never been any doubt that that's what we're going to do. It behooves you to do it. It benefits us to do it. Now we need to figure out what that, what that recipe looks like. So here's, I think an important question for for the the noobs watching is everyone wants to sell big deals, right? Everyone wants to sell a million dollar deal, a $10 million deal, whatever you started out of the Citadel selling account-based sales. You were selling back to the customers and they weren't big deals. And were you selling big deals at Blackboard? Bigger deals, Bigger yes. deals? Yeah. So how do you make that transition? How do you 
become a big deal expert like you are now. Yeah, am I a big deal expert? I think so. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I know what the size deals you, <laughs> you sold, and I know what the commission is. All right, all right, all right. So um, I, I think that's a tough question, but I'll try to give you a good okay. answer. Um, part of it is is just being bold. Okay. And I know that's a little cliche, right? Mm-hmm. Just be bold. Just go in there and say, I want to do it. Mm-hmm. You got to find the right person that's going to want to receive that message. Mm-hmm. So off camera, you and I were talking earlier Somebody comes to me with a problem. I don't think about it as dollars and cents. I think about it, how big is my problem to solve? Mm-hmm. But I think all that stuff is kind of cliche. I, yeah. I think the real way you do it is, is, is you go and you build stakeholder support throughout. Mm-hmm. If you're selling an enterprise system, you can't just call on a plant or a division. You got to get global and you mm-hmm. got to hustle to do that. Mm-hmm. The, the real work is done building your value proposition in more than one place. Mm-hmm. A uh, divisional problem is going to cost less than a global problem. So yeah. if you're only focusing on a division, yeah. then you're going to miss out your opportunity to expand that deal to a bigger picture. Okay. And <clears throat> your 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 breakthrough deal, the first, I would say, big, really big deal you did, was that Georgia Pacific? It was one of the bigger ones, yes. Yeah. yeah. And that was with IBM? It was. Yeah. So can you describe that deal to yeah. us? Yeah. Yeah. So um, like a lot of these big organizations come um, – they had old technology. They had new technology. They mm-hmm. had outdated systems. They had new people. They had all these complex business problems. But what they didn't have was kind of a standard direction. Mm-hmm. So a big part of what we did was let's help you get pointed in the right direction. Technology aside, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? How does this look to you in a year, two mm-hmm. years, five years? And then we built the technology around it. Okay. So it was less about widgets and features and functions. It was more about helping them really look forward. And we never, we never painted that picture without us in it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was always part of us as part of that, part of that picture and part of that step. Yeah. Yeah. So just to be able to call on someone high enough at GP, how did you get that? Uh, You just did it. You just did it. it. Yeah. You read the 10 Ks at the time they were recently private. So there was still some public information. Yeah. But there was also a lot of research that went into it. Where did they go to school? Who did they know? Yeah. What do they like to do? As To the extent that you can find it, um, that was the focus. And then it was very distinct three bullet points. If I can help you with these three things, this is where I've helped other people do it. You already have a relationship. Does it make sense for us to start? So just, just again, if you, you had a territory. This company was in your territory. Yes. And nobody came to you and said, hey, Nate, here's a big account. Go sell it. You just you said this is in my territory. No one's doing anything. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure out what they want. Well, yeah, that's interesting. So there's a certain profile of your customers where you can get a big deal. So if you want to smell uh, spell, sell a really big deal into a company, you're going to go for a bigger one. Yeah. Um, they also had a ton of complexity, a how ton many, of regulations. How many facilities? Uh, they've got 112 around the world. Yeah. yeah so, Mostly North America. Okay. So Georgia Pacific. 112 facilities, mostly in North America, yep. but you know, to solve their problem. And then that's the thing I, I do talk to the noobs about this. You know, if you think about a hun- even 100, 100 facilities, you know, if each one of those is, you know, it's going to cost $100,000, what is that? Is that $10 million? So That's a lot more than a million. Yeah, it's, it's at least $10 million, I think. Yeah. Um, so, th- you know, by itself to Georgia Pacific, that's not a big deal. That's right. It's like, gosh, we got we got the hundred facilities. It's like if you had a hundred cars yeah. and you had to get them all repainted. You know, you do the math; that's a big number. But heck, you got a hundred cars. You got to expect part part of the strategy for a big deal, in my opinion, is is you break it down in the lowest con- common denominator. Yeah. And you say it's only a hundred thousand a plant. <laughs> right. It's only a million dollars a plant. A penny a board. It's a penny a board. <laughs> we'll keep breaking it down to whatever. <laughs> Until somebody says, "Oh, that makes sense," you keep breaking it down. So once you got a taste of the big deals because I know you can't because I remember you called me when that happened and 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 how excited you were and I heard a lot about it but you you've gone on you've done bigger deals right I have. tell us about some other of the, the big ones oh there's so many John I, <laughs> I don't know um maybe I'll leave a company name out but we we've had um probably in the last three years two similar size enterprise mm-hmm. deals yeah um a lot of the same structure a lot of plants or a lot of distribution facilities, um, and they had a common problem across all of them. So the, the the commonality was it was technology that didn't support the process, which didn't support where they wanted to go. Yeah. 
So a lot of it was they received direction from their senior leadership and they weren't able to connect the gap. We know we want to do this. We can't get there with what we have. Yeah. What's the bridge? Yeah. And the bridge is expensive and that yeah. helps us sell yeah. a lot and make a lot of money. Yeah. So what's the biggest contract you've closed now? Oh boy. 50? A little less than 50. Yeah. 50 million. Yeah. A little less than 50. 40, Bang. 48 and some, and some change That's over about, over about a nine month period. That's yeah. a long way from the uh, the ice box. It is. <laughs> it is. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, it's a couple detailed questions. Well, first of all, is this is that last deal? Is that with SAP? It is big yeah. one. Okay, yeah. tell us what it's like because a lot of people know SAP is kind of I would say top of the food chain when it comes to software. Yeah, big, for for big global yeah. companies. What's it like working there? Um, I. For me personally, I, I love it because mm-hmm. it's not about the big deal and the big name. It, it, it comes down to that individual relationship. Mm-hmm. And that starts with, I'm going to say it again, picking up the phone, mm-hmm. having a conversation, asking somebody to spend some time with you. Mm-hmm. I think we can connect business-wise. We might get along personally as well. Mm-hmm. Let's go have a lunch. Let's go hit some golf balls. Let's mm-hmm. go whatever. You can be really bold with that. You mm-hmm. can say with a company like SAP, if you have the resources, Let's go to the masters for the week. Mm-hmm. Bring your wife and your two kids. So mm-hmm. depending on your organization and what you want to do, yeah. but people want to be engaged. They yeah. want to be asked. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really not any harder than that. Interesting. That's so interesting. Cause I mean, that is the biggest software company in the world and it comes right back to let's, let's get, let's, let's develop a relationship to the point where you're going to trust me enough to spend some time with me to see if I might be able to help you. That's right. That's it. That's right. And if you just start by trying to help them, they're going to be like, no. Yep. Cause, right? Because this. You sound like everybody else. Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> um, well, you are an expert now. Tell us some of the things about sales that are different than you thought they were going to be when you started. Uh, um, I didn't know that there was going to be the interpersonal connection. Uh-huh. I thought it was much more um, what we kind of say throw up. Show up and throw up. Yeah. You know, this is how cool we are. Explain and the features. It, and it's, it's not a lot of that. Yeah. It's, 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 a lot of, um, it's a lot of that relationship. Now, one of the benefits that I've had is I've been able to be either I got picked or was picked for really good companies. So mm-hmm. the companies I work for also all have really good products. Yeah. And that helps, right? I'm not trying to sell something that doesn't work. I have confidence in what I say and can deliver. Well, that leads me to my next question is some of the decisions you made along the way. And I mean, gosh, you, you just worked with three great software companies. Yeah. Four. Four. Four, yeah. That's pretty strong. Yeah. And we were talking earlier. I mean, if you if you if any of the noobs pick the wrong one and they're going the wrong way, you know, you either gotta be the change to fix it. Or just get out. Yeah. But don't stay there in the mire. Yeah. And right. just like, oh, you know, it's terrible. Go to a great company. I think you pick the great companies. Yeah. Um, I think if you don't pick the great companies, you're at risk of just falling into a maybe a good job or maybe the right product. Yeah. A lot of sales is timing. Yeah. You know, the difference between, um, you know, maybe making your first hundred thousand or your first million, whatever your perspective is, mm-hmm. is timing. Did I get one deal this year or two? Yeah. So you got to have the opportunity. But um, I think by and large, if you pick a great company, they're great for a reason. And it's yeah. not because their sales aren't there. So I think right. you can, I think you can do really well with that. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, I do coach in the book that <clears throat> figuring out who you are, what you want, and then what, what companies match up to that is so important. Yeah. Because most, most college people that I talk to, including me, all right, they just, they're just like, let's say, busy with other things until they have to get a job. Sure. And they're just looking for a good job, a job that pays well. It's just like any old job. Because you can tell granny that I got a job now, yeah. right? I have insurance. I have insurance, you know, company car, the whole thing. And boy, this is your chance to start. It's almost like a savings program. You start it and you put it in a, in a good a good stock or yeah. something, you know, and it starts to grow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you got lucky. I, I don't think that the biggest companies are necessarily the best either. I mean, DataStream was a great company yeah. at the time. I think it was maybe $75 million in sales. I think we had eight or 900 people, probably not even that many. Who am I kidding? Probably 400 people. A little company. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a big blue chip name. Yeah, and I would say that you should – you should be, if you're going to pick 
Now, if you're not going to pick a big, strong company like an SAP or an IBM or someone like that, <clears throat> you shouldn't pick a startup either because you don't know what you're doing yet. Yeah. Okay, if you don't know what you're doing and there's no training program, you're probably not going to do very well. But some company that's emerging and growing to the point where they can hire good people, pay them, train them, you know, and you can grow with them would be good. Yeah. But if, if you're not sure of that, a big one where you can learn is pretty good. Like people used to back in the day go to work for IBM right. to get the training. Yeah. Um, what right. about things that, I mean, it doesn't seem like much has slowed you down, Nate, but is any decisions you made or oh, things, things that slowed you down from your career sure. perspective? Yeah, there was a time where I had a big chip on my shoulder. Um, I felt like I didn't have the opportunities I should have. I got a little bit of head trash, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, was that with me? Uh, no, that was after you. I felt okay. like I was kind of being held down, all that stuff, right? Yeah. I got a little cocky. Yeah. Um, I also stopped learning my craft. Mm. I kind of felt like I, I figured you it out. It. I had the gift of gab. Yeah. And, and it's not true. I had to go back and, and get back to the basics of how many calls. Yeah. What are the contacts I'm making? Even today, yeah. um, in my current role where I'm a leader, I still have a list of who am I talking to today. If I'm not talking to customers every day, I'm probably not advancing the ball. Yeah. So that's that was something that I got away from. The other was is these great big companies, especially, there's a lot of products. Mm -hmm. You can't learn them all. Focus and be really good on on the area that you want to focus and be really good on. Yeah. And then expand out. So okay. those were those were kind of the things. Those are good ones. Those are good ones. And I, the first two, anyway, for sure are very common. Yeah. Oh yeah. As soon as you start to, you know, know what you're doing. You know, you stop, you stop doing what got you there. So normal. So normal. Um, one last question on the advice. Do you have any, like, one last piece of advice for the noobs? Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. Make a quick note about what you want to say. Make it two or three things. Yeah. And set a goal for yourself every day. Uh, this is the milestone. Whether it's a deal, whether it's a relationship, whether it's pick up the phone, advance the ball. Call first. Call first. Yeah, not email. Call, email, then call again, then call them again. They, they will respect the fact that you're hustling to talk to them. Yeah, because no one's doing it. Nobody's doing it. Because because the next, I think for the most part, this phase of young people coming through now, they're trained to text or yeah. whatever they do. Have something to say, write yeah. it down, two or three simple things, yeah. but call. Okay. And then um, I'm going to ask before we finish, i got a few more questions for Nathan. Um, if, if you like this stuff, you know, like it, follow it, subscribe to it on whatever social media you're catching this on, and uh, and also forward it around to other other folks in your world that it might be helpful for. So do me a favor and do that if you would. I'm trying to reach as many people as possible. So Nate, um, tell us tell us what your favorite word is. Hustle. Hustle. Tell Hustle. us about that. I mean, it's it's it applies to everything in life. You yeah. hustle as a parent. Yeah. You hustle as a as an employee. You yeah. hustle as a father. You hustle as a as a son. Everybody appreciates that hustle. I, many times in my life, the situation wouldn't have ended up the way it had if somebody hadn't been hustling. Yeah. You know, people say I, I got to give that guy a shot because he hustled. Right. He was there. He was present. He was trying. He was hustling. Well, you know what? You hustled to get the job from me. Hustled to get the job. Right. You could have easily said, "Well, that jerk." Well, he liked my scores to hell with him. Well, that's why it took 10 months for you to get me in the chair. It was a little pain. <laughs> I wanted to see you hustle, John. I did hustle. So lastly, Nate, uh, promote yourself a little bit, what you're doing, and if anything, what, what the audience could, uh, maybe how you could help them. Sure. Um, all right. So I work for SAP. I'm one of the vice presidents in the supply chain team. Supply chain is a very hot topic right now. Um I have about uh, 12, uh, now 13 people who work for me directly. Nice. And um, I, it's really not all that different than when I started back in 1996, John. Mm -hmm. It's it's understanding who to target. It's who do we call and what are we going to tell them. Yeah. Um, I've been real fortunate to be able to do that effectively for a long time, in large part thanks to your guidance and help and support yeah. along the way. Yeah. For new people, I, I think um, you got to find ways to differentiate yourself. If you're one of your business owners, differentiation is the key. Um, there's no shortage of companies and products and technologies and services and whatever else you sell. If you don't find that differentiator and find a, a really clear way to message it, mm -hmm. then you're you're subject to getting lost in the shuffle. You're going to have smaller deals. Yeah. You're going to get discounted. You're going to get paid slower. You're going to get mm -hmm. on and on and on. Yeah. That's my two cents. Okay. Well, 
I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, for hustling to get the job from us in the first place. Yeah. And I'm really proud of all you're doing and the monster deals you're getting. And uh, you're, you're a great example for for the noobs. So uh, so thanks for being here. Happy to do it. Thank okay. you. Yes, yep. sir.